All right, guys, so finally I am going to get around to this. Today, we're going to look at the five uh, SR metal coolers that dropped from the new Cooler Story event. Well, they've been around for a long time. We've got the AGL, the Tech, the Int, uh, the SDR, and, of course, the physical one. Again, you can grind these now a lot easier from the revamped uh, Metal Cooler Story event. Again, they drop very, very fast. Uh, it, it's not difficult to grind them at all. Uh, what is a bit of an issue, though, is in order to awaken them, even to Z-awaken them, to Dokkan awaken them, all of that, they do require these Metal Cooler medals. And in order to... Let's say you want to open up full dupe paths on all of them. It's going to take you, what, over 500 medals to do so. So there is a lot of grinding there. Now, if you have a full uh, most malevolent clan team, uh, you are really able to get, you know, about three to six uh, uh, metal drops per run. Uh, the metal coolers themselves, there's missions for defeating, uh, I don't know, what is it, like 400, 500 metal cooler uh, soldiers in the story event, something like that. By the time I had completed that mission, I had all of the dupes um, for all the metal coolers done. So that wasn't really too bad. Uh, so if we head over here, again, we can see I do actually have uh, the dupes farmed up as well. Uh, I've already Z-awakened all of them, gotten them up to level 80. Now, I might rainbow uh, one or two of them. You know, we'll see eventually uh, what happens. But as of right now, I just plan on actually feeding the dupes into them, but not yet. Uh, going ahead and rainbowing them. All right, so let's go ahead and awaken uh, just the the actual ones that we're going to be using. Uh, this is kind of going to be like a two-part video. In this first one, uh, I'm kind of going to do the traditional breakdown I do a lot of times on uh, units. I'm going to focus on all five of the metal coolers uh, just in this video on the breakdown. Uh, we're also going to look at a post by Mobile Man that I thought was very well done and just kind of highlights... Uh, why exactly some of these units are so good. Uh, and then the next video, uh, I will take uh, a full Metal Cooler team into an event. Uh, I'm going to lead it with uh, the summonable Metal Cooler. So it'll be a real, like, uh, leader, leader, you know, real most malevolent clan led team. Uh, you can also uh, use the. Where is he at? Uh, you can use the STR Metal Cooler that you can farm from the event, this guy right here. He is a most malevolent clan, uh, free-to-play category leader, two key HP attack and defense 30%. So you can do kind of like a full free-to-play team. You know, you can use this to try and do like the prime battles and stuff. That that would work. And, you know, these units, they all link so well. Uh, and they're all, uh, honestly, quite good that I, I don't think... <laughs> that wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. Like, for a free-to-play player, or let's just say... You know, for whatever reason, you're deciding that you want to start playing JP, like right around now, uh, you're going to be set because you could just, you know, build up this metal cooler team, rainbow them. You could even maybe re roll to get the summonable metal cooler, and from that point, you're good to go. Uh, all right, so let's just awaken the STR one, uh, then the physical one, then we will go ahead and uh, switch over. We'll break down these metal cooler units, why they're so good, and then we'll take a look at this post uh, by Mobile Man as well. Uh, awakening all of the dupes, that's something I'll just do uh, off screen because that's a lot. <laughs> what is that? Uh, 8, 12, 16, 20 units that we have to rainbow. So that will take uh, just a little bit of time. Uh, but all right, boom, there we go. So now we have all of the metal coolers awakened. Boom, that's what it looks like. The only thing is they really did make the summonable metal cooler and then the free to play one look very very close honestly for me that's tougher to spot than lr cell and the gt uh cell like those two here i'll just quickly show that and then we're gonna switch over those two are also quite close uh that's the android category right there so here's lr cell uh and then there's the gt cell you, you can sort of see it's the shading on lr cell that makes them different but for the metal coolers uh, they don't really have that shading, so that is very, very close. So, all right, let's go ahead and switch over, uh, and now we'll kind of do like, we're going to do like the traditional breakdown. So all five of them are Chrome of Fear Metal Cooler, but then they also have their typing in their name. So AGL, Tech, Int, STR, and Physical, they all have that. Uh, I think their leader skills are all the same as well. 
yeah, it does appear so. Leader skills are still the same. All types key to HP, attack, and defense. 30% for all five of the free-to-play metal coolers. Uh, the AGL1 Super Attack Supernova. Looks like they all just do Supernova, which is supreme damage to all enemies. And then I think they probably would have the all exact the same link skills too. Uh, auto regeneration, fusion, deficit boost, brutal beatdown, thirst for conquest, and strongest clan in space. Uh, yeah, looks like they all have the exact same uh, links as well. Now, one thing to point out with this, fusion and deficit boost, well, really even uh, auto regeneration too, uh, are pretty much just specifically metal cooler links. So that's one reason that the team actually works pretty well. Like, you know, this is a two key link shared across the board. So the whole team is going to have basically full key uh, pretty much at all times. Uh, and then we look at deficit boost, a 15% attack link. So that's going to work pretty good for all of them. Uh, and then, of course, we also have auto regeneration, which is a healing link. And again, the fact that the whole team has that, that's going to be pretty good. <laughs> And then, you know, if you've got the LR Metal Cooler as well, uh, you know, rainbowed or with several dupes in them, they are incredibly powerful. And guess what? That's another free-to-play unit, too. So, that's a lot of free-to-play uh, goodness with the Metal Coolers. Like, I see why they decided to make LR Metal Cooler a free-to-play unit now, right? So, all of the Metal Coolers also do this right here. They all have the same first part of their passive, which is attack and defense 15% up to 80% per most malevolent clan category ally on the team. So you need what? Two, three, four, five. So as long as you have five most malevolent clan uh, units on the team, they will have a full buff. That's good because that means you could still bring Turles, uh on a most malevolent clan team, and then you could still bring... Uh, one of these free-to-play metal coolers, and you will still have the maximum attack buff, which I really, really like that about that. Uh, and then if we're looking to, uh, they all do have the exact same uh, attack and defensive buff, the 15% up to 80 per most malevolent category clan unit. So they're all the same there. And then really the one difference between these units, how about their 12 multiplier? 135, 135, 135. 135 and then 135 okay so the one difference between them is the second part of their passive so the agl one he gives all allies two key when hp is 50 percent or above that's fine but it's really not gonna be needed uh so the agl one you know he, he's he's okay uh the tech one his is attacked enemies attack minus 20 percent for two turns again that's i it's a little better than it would have been a couple months ago because even the newer bosses, you know, their attack can be lowered, their defense can be lowered. Looks like Dokkan is kind of... They're not really making bosses who are immune to everything anymore. Like, sure, next month, you know, we get Gogeta from the Broly movie. I'm pretty sure he's going to be immune to everything, but, you know, not every boss is. So it does still have value uh, being able to do this. Plus, this would be good for, like, Super Battle Road, right? Uh, so the Int one... His is recovers 5% HP at the start of turn. That is actually pretty useful. Again, the fact that you're going to activate auto regeneration like three separate times each rotation, like you're starting the rotation off by recovering 9% HP. Then if this guy's on the rotation, that's another 5% HP. Then like if you're using the summonable metal cooler, he recovers 7% HP after he gets hit. Like there's just going to be a lot of HP regeneration. Uh, a lot of defense. It's going to be a very interesting team to run. Uh, I am looking forward to testing this out. Uh, now, the STR one. All allies attack and defense 15%. So, uh, I do believe that makes him uh, by far the strongest of the uh, metal coolers. Now, that might not seem like a lot, right? All allies attack and defense 15%. But think about units that have support type passives. They don't ever have the ability to have... 80% attack as well. Like, Turles does not give himself any attack buff. The only unit off the top of my head I could think of that has, like, an attack buff and then gives, like, a support buff too is Super Saiyan 3 Bardock. You know, he has his, what is it, 100% attack buff on super attack. And then, you know, when your health falls below 
Now uh, he does give that 40% attack buff to hero uh, units. But like this guy, he is going to provide a lot of extra damage to the team. Just looking at him, I really might rainbow him. I'm thinking about it. I'm really, really, really thinking about it. I think this guy could be pretty solid. Uh, and then moving on, the physical one recovers 15% of damage dealt as health. So he's really good too. So the physical, the STR, and the int ones are really quite good. The AGL and tech ones, they're not really as useful. Now let's quickly take a look at this post by Mobile Man over here. So uh, this is its just a quick, very, very quick analysis. Uh, he calls it a pseudo-analysis because it's not going to have nearly as much detail as his normal ones. Uh, so there's five type specific coolers. Again, this is the stuff that we just all went over. Uh, each part of them does have uh, a unique secondary passive. And then he does mention, you know, 80% attack and defense, which is excellent for free-to-play units. Absolutely it is. So, performance. Uh, don't have a ton of time to calculate the values, but all of them have an average of approximately 900k personal attack at the rainbow lever level. And the uh, STR one, his total average attack is higher because he has that support type passive. Uh, they all defend well. Metal Cooler with the weakest defensive stat is the physical one with an average defense of 49k. The highest defensive one would be the tech one with a defense of 56k. Now, again, that's based off of the fact that uh, the different typings get slightly different buffs from the potential system. Uh, but all of them uh, are solid offensively and defensively. So, although, you know, all of them are good, there's two clear standouts. Let's take a look at this. So, the SCR one. Uh, his support buff to all allies, which combined with his already high personal attack, makes his total average attack excellent even by gotcha summon standards. The amount of attack generated by Metal Cooler on the Frieza Clan team is greater than the amount of attack generated by UI Goku on the Universe 7 representative team. The Universe 7 representative team is the hardest hitting team in the game too, so that is significant. Uh, second standout is the Physical Metal Cooler. Uh, he's the first unit to combine a high percentage based attack boost with a recover X percent of damage dealt as HP mechanic. Yeah, that's true, because think of other units like that, such as Tech Super Boo, does not have any sort of attack buff on there. Uh, based on his high average attack, uh, his passive allows him to recover an average of 136k HP per turn when fighting enemies without damage reduction mechanics. That's a lot. Whoa. Okay. So... Wow, 136k per, per turn? Bro, that, that's a lot of healing. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, the physical and the STR ones are very, very good. Uh, I am definitely strongly considering rainbowing them. Uh, all the type specific metal coolers are great, and that really surprised Mobile Man. They have a very limited niche in that they'll only perform well on teams almost entirely composed of Frieza Clan units, which is true. But it's an acceptable limitation given how well they perform within their niche. I agree 100%. Uh, these are were released and designed. Here, let me toss the upload on the moment. Uh, specifically to buff the most malevolent clan team. Which, if you guys remember, right you know, before release, I was saying it's not a lot there. Like It's just mostly Dokkan Fest exclusives. Not a ton of units. So they helped it out by releasing a ton of of free-to-play power here that's really really going to help the team out so there we go guys uh that breaks down all of the five uh type specific metal coolers they are very good make sure to rainbow them before the event leaves now in the second part uh you know part two of this uh we'll go ahead and take these bad boys into an event so thanks for watching and i'll catch y'all next time